Let's get into the next piece. And chapter eight is called, oh God, do I remember what chapter eight is called? Chapter eight is called Opinions Influence Outcomes. And it applies what you just learned in chapter seven about the principle of resonance. As a matter of fact, the whole thing starts with this idea that a leader's, and you, I've said this so many times, right? But it's the, the, the concept is very powerful that leaders subconsciously communicate to their teammates. And, and let, me, let me say it this way, our perception of people impacts how they show up with us, right? If you think about someone like, dude, this guy's such a loser, or this person, man, they're just, they're just dumb. They're not capable. They can't, oh, hi, it's great to see you. Yes, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, good, let's get it. It's fake. People feel the phoniness in that fake filter that you put on to communicate that you're at your gut level, who your being is. They suck to work with. They're not fun. They're idiot. And then you dress it up and people feel that tone of inauthenticity. This is why authenticity is so powerful. Why is it so powerful? Because it's the truth of who you're being and who you're being is a power producing agent of reality. You know, I don't know how to say that in, in, in the best way for every person watching, but we are powerful beings. We are creators. We create mentally, and then we translate that mental creation into the physical world. And often that translation happens through our interaction with other people. And that's what happens in leadership. We're interacting with other people, and we're having an impact on them. And the major point of this chapter is, chapter eight, is that a leader's mood or a, excuse me a leader's opinion has an impact on how their teammate shows up okay so let me actually share with you a couple of stories let me start with uh, i'll start with um i'll just kind of go in sequence so i'm going to tell you a story about this young lady who's a dear friend of mine an incredible person and she developed she became a multi-millionaire has developed incredible businesses around her because of who she's being as a leader as an entrepreneur as an innovator as a creator and she's got a lot of will to be successful so all those elements come into play but in this story i'm going to show you how she made an impact on one of her teammates which happened to be her brother and transformed what what, what was a business that was not really doing that well and not growing into a dynamic company now all right, so her name's Leslie, and uh, I tell you this story here. So Leslie grew up um, in, you know, she had a, a, a kind of a tough childhood, you know, and she grew up uh, in an environment that was difficult, and uh, she had to, you know, work really hard to get where she had to go, and she chose, like, kind of in her 20s, she's like, dude, I've got to create success in my life. That's what she wanted to do, and she decided I'm going to be a millionaire. And so she kind of waitressed through her 20s and, you know, learned a lot of different things, read a lot of different books and all the information that she gained, I kind of synthesized because this is universal knowledge that's in this book. I've synthesized things into this. So she didn't read this because it didn't exist yet, but she read the underlying concepts that I've synthesized and discovered that our inner space creates our interactions with people and that we can elevate our inner space by the way we choose to work with our internal filter, all right? So she was, uh, you know, had developed uh, many businesses and was very successful, had become a multimillionaire, all right? And so had many different businesses with different partners, but one of them was with her brother. And she started thinking to herself, she noticed like, okay, you know, she's in her like mid, late 30s at this point. She's looking at her different companies. She's thinking, man, like I'm doing so well with these partners and things are growing and changing and it's dynamic and there's motion and movement. But like with my brother, it's stagnant and it's not working. I can't get him to show up at the next level and build this business with me. She's like, dude, anytime anything moves or changes or improves in that business with my brother, I'm doing it. And that's not the way I want things to go. I want him to show up as a leader. I want to have a partnership with him where he is driving the business forward so we make more money together and have more opportunity, but he's driving it because I've got all these other things. And she's like, well, how can I do that? How am I gonna do that? And boom, she had an epiphany. She realized the power inside these concepts and she thought, oh man, that's so interesting. She's like, okay, here's what I see. 
My opinion of my brother is getting in the way of my ability to lead my brother and to create leadership with him, to bring out his power. Because I see with other people that my opinion of this partner is, oh, she's brilliant, she's technical, she's useful, she's helpful, she listens well, she instigates, she comes up with ideas. With this partner, it's, okay, he finds deals, he creates opportunities, like it's working and I can communicate. And I'm, I'm, so ah, I see my opinion of this partner and this partner is they're leaders, they're worth while they're helpful they're going places so my energy my resonance is contributing to an elevation of opportunity with them but with my brother i grew up with him i know him and she realized you know what my true opinion is of my brother he's freaking lazy he's freaking lazy like he's come with me this way and but he's kind of hanging off of me. He's kind of just doing it because that's what we're doing. He's not really generating. He just kind of wants to work. He doesn't want to be an entrepreneur. He just wants to do the job. And she's like, but why can't I transform that relationship? I can make things happen with all these other people, but not with him. And she said, oh, it's because I've already decided who he is in my listening. In my opinion, he is who he is. He's always going to be the same way. He's not going to change. So how can I unlock any power for him? I can't. And that's when she decided to change it and make a difference. So she said, okay, I'm going to shift the way that I perceive my brother. Shifting the filter, right? She chose to change her context of her brother and shift it into, I want to be a contribution. Three C's. Choice, context, contribution. I want to be a contribution to my brother. And the biggest contribution I can make is to shift my opinion of him that he's lazy to, you know what? No. He's powerful, he's a leader, and he's going to create with me. And this is what's gonna happen. And so she altered her inner space to change her interpersonal space, because what happened? See, her brother could only show up as the lazy you know, worker inside of her interpersonal space, her leadership space, because that's who he was for her. But when she opened up and unlocked, no, he's got opportunity, he's got possibility, I'm gonna allow something great to happen. The way she resonated to him, to be is to buzz. Who she was being was buzzing out, was subconsciously resonating a message. Something new is possible here. You don't have to stay in this old pattern. We can unlock a new pattern and create. And that created the possibility of new ways of communicating. And she just noticed, like it literally happened. It took time because you have to be consistent to change an old pattern. But she took time and she's resonating out. I believe in you. I can see it. There's opportunity. I want you to grow. You are. We can do this. Now he starts coming little by little in conversations with a new idea. Hey, what if we do this? And then she encouraged that new behavior. Yes, great. Let's go with it. How can I support that? Giving him the power to drive it. How can I support it? See how she's giving him power? Okay. And then he comes up with another idea and then starts to implement. And then little by little, her brother started to step into his power, his authority, his leadership, his entrepreneurial nature, right? and she completely transformed that relationship and that company, and now it's a million dollar company, and he's running it, okay? That's the power of leadership. That's the power of the leadership space. Who we be for others impacts who they be for us. That's the key, and it worked. I don't even even know if I need to tell you the other story. You think I should? And my voice is dying. All right, I'll tell you. So, I'll give you another story, all right? To be is to buzz. So here is another leader. In this story, I call him in the book Chris. Change his name for, for privacy, but this is one of my students. And so Chris comes to me in the middle of a semester and he says, you know, professor, I can't be here for the last class in which we usually do presentations. And I'm like, well, what's going on? Why can't you be here for the last class? And he says, well, my company is flying me out to the national headquarters uh, to give a presentation. I'm like, uh, on what? And he says, well, they want me to present like how I transform my team from one of the lowest performing teams into the highest performing team in the con in the company in like a month. I'm like, well, how did you do that? He says, well, professor, honestly, I transformed my leadership space. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Tell me the story. So Chris says to me, look, this is what I learned in this class. He says, I realize that when I get under stress, I tend to become an angry a-hole, right? I micromanage people. I bark orders. I get upset. I control everything. I have to know everything and tell everybody what to do. And what I, I'm a control freak. And I said, okay. And he says, well, what happened was, you know, I joined this MBA program, was teaching in the, in the MBA program. And he says, 
I'm doing my homework, I got family, and then I've got work, and then the, our company put on us this major project that was like a lot to do. And I, I started thinking, God, this is so much stress. How am I gonna get my work to take care of my family, do all this? And so I became this angry, control freak micromanager, and I started to constrict everything, and that's when I had the aha moment. I can't do that because that way of being is going to diminish my team's autonomy, their power, their freedom. And frankly, it's putting out an energy of, I don't trust you. And that was his insight. Because remember, the leadership space is about self-awareness. Then it's about other awareness. The self-other awareness, what is my impact on others? Okay, that's what this is about. So Chris says to me, I realize that by having all this control, I'm actually saying to my team subconsciously, I don't trust you, I don't think much of you, and I don't think you can do anything without me. And so they couldn't do anything powerfully or creatively without my input, and so I am always at the control, which means I'm the limit on my performance. I'm the limit on the performance of my team as a leader. I said, okay, well, what did you change? He says, well, I looked at the three C's, choice, context, contribution, and I saw that my context for teamwork and, and for my context for leadership was I'm the boss, okay, I'm the boss, you're the employee, okay? I have the control and you have to obey. And that was his context. This was his context for leadership. This was his paradigm for performance. He's operating in this context, boss, employee, control, obey. There's no power there, there's no freedom, there's no trust. And he says, I chose to shift my context. I go, what did you change it to? He says, I shifted it from boss employee, which was an, in, an unequal relationship to leader teammate. Notice how it's all on the same line, okay? Because this is an equality relationship, okay? There's not control, there's freedom, there's trust. So he created trust that allowed for performance. He shared power. I was like, how did you do that? He says. Well, I applied the third C, choice, context, contribution. When I realized that I was being controlling and, and, and not giving them any power, I realized that I wasn't being a contribution. I was only thinking about myself. Like if they screw up, I'm in trouble. I'm the one that buck stops with me, right? So it's like, well, what if I shifted into contribution and I want them to win? So I created a conversation with them and I sat them down and I said, look guys, here's the deal. I can't do this alone. I don't know how I can lead this team, go to school in an MBA program, have all this homework, take care of my kids, and he hit these new measures that the company put on us. I just don't know how to do it. So the truth is, I'm trusting you guys. Like I need your help, and I wanna be a contribution to what we need to succeed. And I'm gonna let go of the control here because I want us to win and I can't do it alone. So how can we work together as a team? What can I do to support you? How do we make sure we hit these goals? Let's talk. Boom, he completely changed the paradigm. And so what happened was, instead of them feeling like less than him, they felt equal to him, which created this sense of real trust. And that real trust made them want to support him. It made his team want to come through for him, much more than this paradigm, right? And so they came up with ideas and they came up with sort of plans and programs of how they were going to execute and they did it. And in a very short period of time, they elevated from a very low performing team to the highest performing team in the company. And he says, that's what I'm gonna go do. I'm like, okay, so you're gonna fly out to the national headquarters to tell them, what are you gonna tell them? He's like, I'm gonna tell them that I transform my leadership space, that I unlock the power on my team through a contribution mindset and creating dynamic trust and communication. And, and also accountability, because the team created the steps of accountability to execute and the problem solving, which by the way is a little bit of foreshadowing to the second book, and there's a whole series of videos already on here about all those lessons. And so look into those if you'd like to. But this is the key, that your leadership space actually has an impact on the people around you. So when you elevate your perception of others by using these tools, it communicates power to them and allows them to elevate back for you. This is the key. And that's what I think is so fascinating about this material. I hope you enjoy it.